Welcome to Wrestling With Heart, a podcast looking at pro wrestlers giving back to their community. Join me, Stanley Carr, as I interview wrestling's hottest names who use their platforms as entertainers to raise awareness and do community service. Hello and welcome to another edition of Wrestling With Heart. This is the show where we talk with professional wrestlers about their lives in and out of the ring as well as their lives outside of the ring, whether that's volunteering, doing charity work, any type of community service, paying it forward, inspirational messages. We're always here to provide some positivity here on the show. And I've got a very special guest with me today. He is a veteran of the wrestling business. He's been involved since 2010. Uh, he's the first ever inter-county champion of Rocket Pro Wrestling, one of the longest reigning U.S. champions, United States champions in new breed wrestling history, also the third annual Dusty Cameron Memorial Battle Royal Champions for Wrestling for a Cure. And uh, this guy's got a message he wants to spread to everybody that's listening to the podcast today. Please welcome to the show Mr. Tyler Bodine. Welcome, Tyler. Oh, Bodine, but that, that's okay. Bodine, okay. Thank you for correcting me. It's all good, man. You're, all right. you're, not, the first, you're not the first person. Don't worry, it's fine, bud. Okay, cool. All right, Tyler, so let's get let's get into this. Um, sure. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming on, and uh, why don't we start talking about your childhood and upbringing. Where did you grow up? Absolutely. So I, uh, I actually grew up in a small town in uh, Illinois, um, I've since moved to Texas, kind of took up shop down here in, in Laredo, which is only um, 10 minutes from Mexico border, to be honest with you. But, uh, mm. you yeah, know, I, I, I grew up in Illinois. Um, I travel back to Illinois quite a bit. But, uh, yeah, and I uh, grew up watching wrestling, idolizing guys like Stan Hansen, Hulk Hogan, Bruiser Brody. Um, Stan, Stan, there would actually be no, there wouldn't be, um, a Tyler Bodine without Stan Hansen. Oh, of course. Texas guy. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, also, also, I want to apologize. I want to apologize for my voice. I had, uh, I had COVID back in 2020 and I uh, lost my voice and never got it back fully. So, oh man. I, so now I just sound like a 12 year old boy going through puberty, man. You know? <laughs> wow. Yes, that, that that that's horrifying. Uh, very much. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. Um. That I mean, COVID, you know, changed a lot of people's lives. You know, st I'm still, you know, trying to get back up to where I was before the pandemic started. But like, so many places shut down. The world just shut down in general. Uh, a does. lot of people. A lot of people just forgot how to how to live, how to live their life, and had to had to revert or do other things. You know, pivot to doing things differently and it's just we're still trying to get back to that that new normal i mean what was what was right. that like for you you know adjusting uh when when the pandemics first started it sucked like no wrestling companies were running wrestling was shut down um and like wrestling is my former income like that's what i do for a living so uh being a pandemic definitely uh cost me a lot of money to be honest with it um but uh, i was able to make i was able to manage it um unfortunately you know like i said i was uh i was out of wrestling for a little while because like you said everything shut down no wrestling companies were running and uh everybody had to be you know with that that time it was like 100 feet from each other you know nobody could be <laughs> it was some yeah. crazy yeah I mean, just the just the fact that you're not able to do what you love for a living. I mean, that had to have been heartbreaking. It was horrible, man. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so you know, walk me through um, what happened. You said you got you got COVID in t September of 2020. Is that one? No, November of 2020. November of 2020. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. walk me walk me through exactly how you got it. So, to be honest with you, I really don't remember how I got it. Um, I uh, was with my ex-wife at the time, and uh, we uh, we both ended up getting COVID. And, of course, she was pregnant at the time, which didn't help either. Um, but uh, I was – I felt like I was going to die. Like, I uh, 
could, I couldn't hardly breathe. I could barely move. Um, I was basically in bed for three days straight. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it sucked. And then with my ex-wife at the time, um, getting COVID, um, and her and her having being pregnant with our daughter, um, I actually had to give her shots every day to prevent the baby from getting COVID. And that's so. I mean, um, that, and for, I mean, I don't know if any other guys that had to do that with their significant other was was pregnant at the time, but uh. But yeah, we had, I had to give her a shot every day to prevent our daughter from getting COVID. And then, of course, when she was born, um, she just she just turned two. Um, but in the first two years of her life, she's had COVID twice. Yeah. That's, that's unbelievable. I mean, if you're listening to this, you know, it's important, you know, because this has been a public health issue for a while. Uh, Go get your vaccine. Uh, get vaccinated. That's that's it's it's very important. You know, if if you don't know exactly if this can help save your life, uh, I would highly recommend just researching, doing your research. But I think the, the you know it may not necessarily you know prevent you from getting COVID, but it can definitely prevent you from going to the hospital and and, and getting further ill. Uh, wow, that's 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 so sad. I'm, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. And and your and your wife or ex wife uh, seems like a strong woman being behind you. Yeah, she. Uh, uh, yeah, we uh, well, we have a we kind of coping it right now. We're di- obviously we're divorced. Um, she's moved on, um, but we uh, we co-parent for our daughter. So. Oh man. Yeah, I'm so uh, sorry. I have to go through that. That's terrible. Uh, it, um, if anybody's listening that has kids. Whether you like your ex significant other, your ex husband, ex boyfriend, ex wife, ex girlfriend, whatever it may be, if you have kids together, even if you hate each other, it's the best interest of the child to co parent as best as you can. Because at the end of the day, it ain't about you or it ain't about your significant other, it's about that child. Definitely. Well, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit, you know, we're going to get into some more, you know, serious stuff later on in, in the program, but let's talk about, you know, h- how you got into wrestling. You had mentioned you were, you were growing up watching guys like Stan Hansen and Hulk Hogan growing up. Was there yeah. a moment where you said, this is what I want to do for a living? Absolutely. Like I, uh, um, I remember sitting on the couch with my grandpa watching, uh, watching old school wrestling. And, uh, I'm like, you know what? I bet you I can do that. And I just, I'm like, that's, and I just, it became like my drug. It's like something that I, I watched it religiously every time, every chance I got. And uh, when a, when a school opened up by me, um, actually I was, um, Mustafa Ali, excuse me, who currently is with the WWE, mm-hmm. um, trained me. And he had a, a, opened up a school that was only like a half hour from where I, where I lived at the time. And uh, I'm like, you know what? This is my opportunity. I signed up. And I trained with him for six months. Um, and it was it was hard. It was rough. It, was, it wasn't yeah. easy. After. Um, and then uh, later on, and then later on in my, in my career, I uh, uh, also trained with Tracy Smothers. Mm-hmm. The Wild Eyed Southern Boy. Mm-hmm. Um, an ECW original, and uh, he taught me a lot as well. And, like I said, I've been uh, I've been going strong since November of uh, 2010. Wow, I mean, yeah, that's a long career. I mean, 13, 13 plus years. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, you had mentioned it wasn't easy. You know, a lot of people have said that. Um, when you go to a wrestling school, they 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 teach you a bunch of drills. What were some of the drills you, they they put you through? Um, definitely. Um, one of them was, was up downs, basically like you stand straight up, go to crouching position. You pump your legs back and put some position, do a push up, crunch, crunch back into the crunch position and then jump up in the air. And we had to do that over and over and over again. Um, we would run around the ring for cardio, um, not in the ring, but outside the ring. Uh, we'd, uh, We'd run ropes. We we'd uh, hit the ropes back and forth, like uh, 
I'd be, I'd be going one way and another guy would be going the other way. And uh, if we hit each other in the middle, we'd have to start over. We'd just keep going and going until he said stop. And I mean, that was killer cardio. Um, very good for conditioning, though. Yeah. Um, literally, the first month was all cardio. We didn't even really start learning how to fall until the month two. Jeez. I mean, the first, the first month was just strict cardio, cardio, cardio. But, I mean, you look at a guy like Mustafa Ali. I mean, that guy is, is all about cardio. I mean, that guy's, yeah. a, that guy's a cardio machine. He is. I mean, he, he he moves fast at the speed of lightning. I mean, if you watched his matches, uh, he was on NXT the other night. Uh, yeah. And he's been on Monday Night Raw as well. So, yeah. What, yeah. A, what a talent. I mean, you talk about somebody that I feel like oh. – um, He's kind of crossed over. He was on 205 Live doing the cruiserweight stuff, and he's kind of, you know, hung around like the U.S. title division. So, um, yeah, yeah, he definitely, uh, he definitely deserves a push. I mean, he did not get enough credit for what, for what he's done. He's definitely yeah. did not get enough credit. Yeah. No, no. I mean, talk about one of the guys I feel like you know should be respected and uh, recognized for his hard work. Uh, that's a guy right there that I think you know should get a title run at some point. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. So you get started in the business. Tell me about like your, your first few matches. What were they like? They're horrible. Horrible. Um, I, uh, I knew, I knew, I knew how to, how to, how to wrestle or in our terminology. I knew how to work, but it was, I was really jittery. Um, still not really easy on my feet. Um, super, super nervous. I mean, there's still times I get nervous, but I mean, the first few matches were absolutely horrible, but, uh, obviously as time went on, I improved, I got better. Um, and now I'm, like I said, I've been doing it for November of this year, it'll be 13 years. Yeah. I mean, still going strong. I mean, even, even with, even with getting COVID, I mean, that's just, it's it's amazing to see that you're still able to do it. Uh, who are yeah. like who are some of you know your your favorite opponents that you've worked with? Uh, the Wild Man Beast is one of them. He uh, if you look up um, uh, Abdullah the Butcher mm -hmm. and the Wild Man Beast, literally they could be father and son. Um, Chief Atakulakula um, has an Indian gimmick out of Iowa, legend on the independent scene. I wrestled uh. I've wrestled Tracy Smothers before. I've been in the I've been in the ring with uh, a Big Beef from AAW in Chicago. I've been um, I've been I've I've wrestled. I've, I probably forgot more people than I that I have been in the ring with than I can remember. I've been so yeah. Sure. Where did you come up with the nickname the American Outlaw? Really so awesome. One of, so one of my best friends who was actually training with Mustafa Ali with me um, as has uh, his own business called the American Outlaw Derby Products. He sells stuff for demolition derbies and people. And that's how he, that's his makes his living. And I asked him, I'm like, hey, can I use the American Outlaw name? Since I mean, because he has his trademark. I'm like, hey, can I use that name? For my gimmick, and he gave me permission. And there's only two people that are allowed to use that name: he, him for his business, and me. So I feel pretty privileged that he allowed me to uh, use that for my gimmick. Yeah, it's a pretty badass nickname right there. Uh, yeah. So where, are, like, you know, some of the places you've wrestled? You know, you grew up in you grew up in Texas. You know, where are some of the places you've wrestled? Uh, have you wrestled just in the country? You've been around the world. Yeah. Just, um, so far, just in the country. I uh, I don't have a passport at, at, this, at the moment, so that's why I haven't been able to go and get out of the country. Um, finance, finances and wise, I haven't been able to get a passport. Hopefully, someday I will. I'd love to get. I'd love to go to, to Japan, Mexico, Canada, England. Um, but I've been as far as the states. I've wrestled in Wyoming, Nebraska, um, Nebraska. South Dakota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, North Carolina, Alabama, Tennessee, Minnesota, 
yeah, I think, I think that's all. <laughs> I might, yeah. I might be missed a few too. Wow, yeah. I mean, it seems like you've been all over the country. I mean, all, all over the, all over the U.S. That's that's so impressive. Have, yeah. Yeah. All right. Got so, it. what what can you tell me about like advice you were given? You know, getting started in wrestling. So one thing that Mustafa Ali told me that I never will, I will never forget. And I tell rookies this now when they're coming in, I'm like, he told me eyes and ears open and mouth shut, meaning pay attention, listen to your trainer, and do not speak unless spoken to, or you're asked a question. And I have lived by that. And now I tell a lot of rookies that are coming in the exact same thing. Yeah. You know, listen to your trainer, you know. Pay attention to your trainer. Don't speak unless they ask you a question. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely, it's definitely good to have, you know, discipline that kind of teaches you to be, you know, be tough, be strong. Um, Cause you know, you're, you're basically like in the army, you're learning, yeah. how to, you're learning how to take orders from your drill sergeant or your commander in chief. And yep. you have to, you have to abide by those, those orders. You know, Absolutely. so you move, so you move up. Yep, most definitely. Yep. Yeah. So you're wrestling. You're doing all this stuff. Um, you have a um, you have a story. I know you had mentioned to me. Um, you know, why don't you tell me a little bit about it? Um, because sure. it's, it's 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 very it's very uh sad, but also a little inspirational. You know, to those people that maybe. Maybe going through some things. Sure, I, I appreciate that, man. Oh, uh, yeah. So I am a I'm a two time suicide survivor. I um I was I used to be an alcoholic and I was addicted to prescription painkillers, specifically get in a narco. I would I was in a a almost eight year relationship, not with my ex wife, but previously um, with a with a woman for almost eight years. And um, there was a lot of uh, turmoil, so to speak. And I became an alcoholic. I would drink to basically take away my pain. Temporarily, I was, um, I got injured wrestling and the doctor prescribed me pain meds, biking it in Narcos. And I became addicted to them it's to the point where I was faking an injury to go to the doctor to eat for he would, would prescribe me more just so I could have them on hand because I was so dependent on on the Vicodin. And um, I, re- I struggled with mental health a lot. I was never really diagnosed until recently. I uh, I knew of... So growing up, I was pretty much raised by my grandparents, and they really didn't believe in, like, depression, anxiety, bipolar, PTSD, none of that stuff. Um, so I really did, and, and that affected me in high school because I would, I started cutting in high school. I um, constantly felt suicidal in high school, but I could never, I could never talk about it because... I was never allowed to you know that that didn't exist. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know, you're just, you know, you just hormonal. You're in high school, you know, don't, you know, but now I'm an advocate because mental health is a very real thing. Mental health affects men and women alike and children. Um, and once I got out of high school, I went to college at this girl things were good for a while but uh and then i moved in with her and we uh we lived with her mom and dad for five years and uh it was pretty from the moment we moved from the moment i moved in with her mom and dad it was rocky from the, from the start um and then eventually in 2017 we uh we bought our own place and i continued to drink continue to take the pills um i was a rage i was a 
part of my language, but I was an asshole. I was, I was, I was, the, the alcohol and the pills consumed me and it was take, overtaking my life. Um, literally every night when I got home from work, I would drink a six pack and pop two Vicodin just to pass out and go to sleep because of the, the mental pain, mental health and the mental pain that I was feeling. I was having voices in my head telling me to hurt myself, to do this and that. And uh, 2018, I'll, ne I'll never forget that May 22nd of 2018 was my first suicide attempt. I came home and uh, my girl that I was with at the time had left. Took, uh, took everything from my house, pretty much everything out of my house and left. Uh, I had found out that she was sleeping with one of my best friends. Um, they're still together to this day. But that night, I didn't tell anybody what I was doing. And I took half a bottle of prescription painkillers and drank about a 12-pack until I passed out. And I, I felt like crap the next day, but I was so pissed off that I woke up. And I'm like... I just want my pain to end. You know, I'm already dealing with the pain of mental illness, depression, anxiety. And now the girl who I was engaged and married to left me. Um, and now I look back and if, any, if anybody's listening, if you have caught your significant other cheating on you or found out or you're dealing with a breakup, Life does suck, and it hurts. I know it does, but I promise you, I'm living proof that life gets better, you know. Um, and then about a month later, my uh, now ex-girlfriend or ex-fiance contacted me through Snapchat and agreed to meet. And I, I thought going in that, you know, hey, she had some time to think, you know, we'll reconcile. I couldn't have been more. I couldn't have been more farther from the truth. We sat down at a park, and she proceeded to tell me she had not loved me for the last two months. Here it is, a girl that I'm supposed to be marrying. Been together since 2010. It's now 2018, and she drops this bombshell on me. And I'll never forget. She told me, Tyler. Don't do something stupid. Well, I'm a stubborn ass, and I don't take no for it. And so I went went home, went to the gas station, got a 24 pack, a case. Went home. I had a full bottle of Vicodin, and I took the entire bottle of Vicodin and drank about half the case of beer until the police showed up. An ambulance. Um, because I told my ex-girlfriend at the time what I was doing, that she that she contacted the police an ambulance. Um, I don't really, I don't really remember a lot because I was very high and under the influence of alcohol. But what from what I've been told, I tried to uh, I tried fighting the police, saying you know. I was, just, I was using some belligerent words that I wasn't going to go. Well, they eventually got me into the ambulance and I was taken to the hospital. And the next thing I know, I was in the hospital bed getting my stuff pumped. Um, I ended up going to the psychiatric hospital for about a week. Or it might have been like 72 hours. 72 hours um, and I was able to get on, get on some psychotropic medication. And um, when I got out, I, um, when, when I was in the hospital, I'll never forget my, my uncle, my uncle, my mom's brother walked in and he uh, was like, he looked at me, he's like, Tyler, what is one thing that means more to you than anything in this world besides that? And he used a derogatory term for my, my ex. And I'm like, professional wrestling. And he looked at me, he's like, well, that's what you need to focus on. 
You need a book about professional wrestling. You need to use that as your drug. And since June of 2018, I have been completely clean from prescription medication. I do still drink on occasion, but it's not like I used to. Um, I occasionally drink. And then um, I ended up moving away, continued to wrestle, and met my ex-wife, who uh, we ended up, she ended up getting pregnant, and we had, a, we have a beautiful baby girl, and I look back now, and I thank God, I thank God every day for not taking me when I had my suicide test, because I love being a dad. Being a father is the greatest feeling in the world. And had I could successfully commit a suicide that day, I would not be able to say, I would not be able to be a father for my little girl. Now, granted, her mom and I didn't get, didn't work out. And when we were going through the divorce proceedings, I did fall off. And I was ready to drive my truck off a bridge and, and my life again. I was struggling financially. I felt like I was a shitty father. I felt like my daughter deserved a better, better father. And I found God again because I had um, recently lost faith in God through the, after the divorce. And I, I found my faith in God again. I reached out to some friends. And I went back into the psychiatric hospital for about a week to get my meds adjusted and get better help and uh, get into some counseling. And it, it helped me sure, tremendously. And uh, I had mentioned before, the wild man beast, that man actually drove, met me at the hospital and they stayed with me until I was checked in. And I mean, that, that right there, um, is the epitome of a brotherhood. And I met I met the wild man beast through wrestling. 95% of my friends I met through wrestling. Wrestling and brotherhood. Wrestling, I love professional wrestling. I have met some of the greatest people in the world through professional wrestling. Where professional wrestling saved my life. And I'm living proof. Life sucks. Life does get hard. Some days you just want to, and some days you want to, you just like, God, take me away. And I'm no Bible thumper by any means. Everybody has the right to believe what they believe. But uh, I promise you, life's going to get better. Don't give up on yourself. You know, reach out. When I'm not wrestling, I work in behavior health. I work in mental health. And it's, it's my way of giving back to people because I got it. the people that helped me save my life. And now it, that's my way of giving back and saying thank you. And I help people every day. And I love, I, I love what I do. It's very rewarding. I have people that come into my office that are drug addicts, that are suicidal, homicidal even. And I refer them to services to better themselves and help them. And they're doing much better. And I feel good to be able to give back. And like I said, life, gets, life sucks. Life gets hard. But I'm living proof that, you know, you, you're meant to the time. If you're watching this, I'm glad you're here. You don't know me and I may not know you, but I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're watching. I'm glad you're still going strong. Don't let, don't let the devil get you down and don't let, don't let these burdens weigh you down because you're better than that. Yeah. Uh, wow. What a, 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 you know, near tragic, but uplifting uh, story. You know, you've been, been through so much in your life and the fact that you're able to turn it around and make it better for yourself. That's, that's just, it makes for just a positive, positive outcome. And, and I'm so grateful that you're able to still be around, be alive and be able to help others that are going through something. Absolutely. I, uh, and I'm, I'm not one to judge by any means. I get, like I, said, I get a lot of people in my office and I'm like, whatever you tell me is safe with me. 
And I, I've had some of the greatest counselors in the world. And through them, I'm able to help other people now. And I, I love, and like I said, I try, I wish I could do more public speaking gigs like this. Um, I haven't really, that haven't, hasn't really caught steam. Um, Cause I always, I love to share my story and I love to, I want to be an inspiration to other people. And I want to help as many people as I can. Even if I help one person, that's one more person that doesn't have to go through the struggles that I went through yeah. growing up. And so, some people are growing up right now or dealing with situations that I did growing up where you weren't supposed to talk about mental health. You weren't supposed to talk about depression or anxiety. It wasn't a thing. But I'm here to tell you that mental health is very real. Yeah. Very real. Mental, mental health is just as, if not more important than physical health. Because without good mental health, you're not going to be physical healthy. That's true. And, uh, and honestly, without good physical health, you may not be good mental health. Uh, but unfortunately, some people, due to injuries or life circumstances, aren't physical healthy. But if, if they can get into the right people, talk to the right people to have a good mental health, good outspect out, good have mental outlook on life. They can live a good healthy life. And that's what I try to tell people. Like mental health, mental health is so, so darn important for everybody. And it, it breaks my heart to see I have some people coming. I have kids five years old that come into my office because they feel suicide. That breaks my heart as a father. Mm as it i i'm not much of a crier but i cried the first time the other day when a little girl six years old left my office because of the stuff that she told me and that she's going through it it breaks my heart man and now yeah. if i can just be, if i can just be an inspiration to men and women and children alike and just help give back even through wrestling I know I've done my job. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, Tyler, this has been wonderful getting a chance to speak with you. Um, where can people find you on social media? So I'm on I'm on TikTok, I'm on uh I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, the American Outlaw Tyler Bodine. Uh I'm on Snapchat, Tyler Bodine. One thing I love so much about professional wrestling and the wrestling business is, yeah, you have your clicks, you have your egos and whatnot, but the people that really matter are the people that I can sit with my brothers and sisters, and I try to be around those people. And the promotions that I work for, that's how it is. It's a brotherhood. It's a brother sisterhood. It's it's about family, and we go to bat for each other. And um, through my struggles with mental health, um, Scott Zai is one of the guys that have been there for me. As somebody to talk to, somebody to confide with. Um, I've had other brothers, Wild Man Beast. He's like the father. He's like a father to me because he, he's an older guy, so he's like a father to me. Was there for me. Um, so professional wrestling has really, really saved my life. And the people that I've met through wrestling, the good people, not the piece of crap people, but the good people have really had an impact on my life. And I, and outside of wrestling, I'm the greatest thing ever happened to me is be, becoming a father. My daughter is my world. And I, I love her to death. And I'm glad. I'm glad that I'm still here today to be a father for her. I think she might want to. You think she might want to follow follow in her father's footsteps and be a wrestler? I don't know, man. I see how some of these women are treated in wrestling business nowadays, and not unfortunately, not all the women are treated respectfully and appropriately. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I mean, obviously, she's going to know how to defend herself and. Uh, She's going to know how to beat people up, but she's going to also know that 
Bullying is not allowed, but you are allowed to defend yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tyler. Um, Tyler ahead, sorry. No, no, no. I was just going to. If you if you had this if you, if you had something you wanted to finish uh if you could finish what you're about to say. Oh, I'm good, man. All right. Well, Tyler, thanks again for coming on. Uh, it means a lot yeah. to me, and you're more than welcome to come back on anytime. I appreciate, it, man. Is there a way I could I would be able to share this on my page or? You yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absol- absolutely. This is Wrestling With Heart. I hope you found this podcast to be informative and entertaining. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and look out for the next edition. 